So in searching for content as a content creator, I'm always looking for something a little bit different, intriguing, eye-catching, and I came across this article from brides.com indicating that these are the 17 best colognes for men that he will love. And as a fragrance entrepreneur, enthusiastic individual, I want to see if one, I agree with some of the fragrances that I put on this list, two, if I would personally recommend them or wear them on a wedding day or to some sort of social event, and three, if I've even smelled any of these. Let's roll my motherfucking music so we can review Brides.com's article of the 17 best colognes that uh, he'll love. I'm kind of a big Blessed morning, my beautiful peoples. You know who it is. This is your boy, C to the U to the B to the A. So, brides.com. Shout out to brides.com for, I mean, allowing me to do this or a courtesy to them. This article is all their work. This is just me giving my opinion on this article. So, the article states as follows These are the 17 best colognes that he will love. Or will he? So I just want to jump right into it. I'm not going to start reading all the pinpoints and article opening regarding this page. I just want to see what some of the fragrances on the list. And the first one we're going to start with is, of course, Blue de Chanel. I'm not very surprised that this fragrance is on the list. The mass appeal and the hype behind this fragrance is levels upon levels upon levels. Truth be told, when I first smelled Blue de Chanel, I was very impressed myself. It was like, wow, super sexy. It hit all the facets that you're looking for, but it really, really became one of these hype fragrances that you started to smell everywhere, at least where I'm from. It became instantly like a fucking tsunami of Blue de Chanel everywhere. And this scent profile was just undeniable in an every fucking corner. Being from a city, I can actually pinpoint it quite easily, especially where there's a bunch of Dominicanos and Boricuas that are just like, you're gonna smell it everywhere. So they're saying that it's available at $90 at Sephora and Ulta. I love that they're offering options and price points because Chanel, you won't find it on the gray market almost anywhere unless you're going to like eBay, offer up or whatever and hope it's real. Blue de Chanel has everything you want in a cologne. Freshness, longevity, crisp, refined and elegant, but not in the way that reminds you of your grandpa. I agree. I don't believe Blue de Chanel will remind you of any grandpas, although grandpas nowadays are kind of hip and sexy and grown and you know what I'm saying? Dressed up in bespoke suits and fucking fedoras. So maybe it's not too musky instead it boasts a woody cedar undertone and lingering traces of grapefruit making it a fresh clean smelling option definitely is that i'm gonna have to agree with you it is a great fragrance that if you're not in the fragrance space or if you're looking for a safe option to pick up blue de chanel would definitely be one of those options for me personally it would be the parfum concentration that is my favorite out of that whole entire lineup and if i were to pick this option which wouldn't be my first to be honest with you Parfum option would definitely be my first. So yeah, I agree. Thumbs up. Next one. Ah, the next one on the article is Versace Arrows. Ah, it's a good fragrance. And I like the different price points that they have listed. They have $30, $30, and $92. That is a drastic jump. Shop it around. You can get it closer to that 30-ish dollar mark. Versace Arrows doesn't scream to me men. It screams to me young men, young adults, youth, clubby, popping in these streets, turned up, you know what I'm saying? Like it doesn't scream something that brides.com would list in those fragrance categories, from my personal opinion. I feel it's a little bit more youthful, it has a great mass appeal, it has a beautiful minty aquatic freshiness, but it's also not super duper exciting, but will get you a ton of compliments. Now the way they indicate it is we don't know what's cooler, the beautiful art deco style of the bottle in addition to the mint and this fresh tropical scent infused with orange, Italian, lemon, zest, green, ample, tonka bean, amber, woody, vetiver, moss, etc., etc., etc. Pretty universal fragrance, but does well wear in the summer. Yes, I agree. It is very universal, but it's mostly in the high heat. Personally, I don't feel that this would be on a brides.com list, although this isn't necessarily indicating for wedding per se, but I just feel it's a little bit youthful and kind of whatever. It's not a bad fragrance, so I'm not gonna disagree. Will he love it? Yeah, there's a lot of dudes who do, but for me personally, uh, it's not one that I would put on my list. Next one. 
the classic OG of OGs, Aqua De Gio. I'm gonna tell you right off a of rip, a ton of people like this. That's why the popularity of this fragrance is through the roof, probably one of the most highest selling fragrances in like history. However, a little bit boring and redundant. It's been out there for so long and it being one of the highest grossing selling fragrances in the game. Can you imagine how many people have the shit? People are exhausted. There's nothing creative or sexy about it. Most likely, if any wife is making their husband read this article, although I'm reading it and my wife's not making me, they're not checking for Aqua Di Gio. It's classic, it's versatile, it's absolutely everywhere. It's kind of boring, it's kind of mundane, and there's other flankers that are a little bit more popular and sexier than this option, personally. Will he love this fragrance? I don't know if he's gonna love it at this point, maybe at some point closer to when this fragrance released, possibly. But at this point, there's so many amazing options. Although this is an OG with a landmark staple attached to it, I think it's a little bit kind of, mm, there's much better other shit out there. So I don't know, next one. Haha, -ha, now we talking baby, we talking that Tuscan swine, that Tom Ford Tuscan leather. That gorgeous raspberry leathery note is absolutely stellar. Yes, I agree. This is a fragrance that he will absolutely love. Beautiful, sexy, not my absolute favorite from the Tom Ford line, but not far from the top. Now, the way they speak about it is, as the name suggests, Tom Ford's Tuscan leather merges leather and suede notes of jasmine and sensual sophisticated scent, along with saffron to warm things up. Do not forget that raspberry vibe that's in this fragrance. It is beyond prominent, super unique, and makes the fragrance lively and sweet. You got that leather and you got that suede nuance that just provides such thickness and leathery masculinity that you have a little bit of sweetness that just gives that mass appeal flair. I totally agree with Tuscan Leather being on this list. He will absolutely love it. Next one. Very good option. The next one is Dior Sauvage Elixir. My favorite as of this point from that flanker line. It is stellar. It just adds a nice flair to that mass appeal Dior Sauvage DNA with that kind of coffee-ish ground darkness that I think is super sexy. They say this is the epitome of a modern classic. Sauvage is a spicy fresh scent to grab attention to anyone that passes by. I totally agree. It does have that warm ambery leather cedar blend that they're talking about mixed with pepper lavender undertones and it is unique and a fan favorite to come for sure. As a newer release, I totally agree that dudes will absolutely love this fragrance. Some might like to stick to that original Sauvage DNA and this doesn't deviate from it so much but it has a lot more characteristics and mature sex appeal qualities to it that I feel that this one is definitely the epitome of those fragrances. Some may disagree, but I don't disagree with this list. Next one. Very refreshing, bright. Mason Mar Margiela Jazz Club. Yeah, dudes will absolutely rock this joint for sure. I don't think still to this day enough people pick this fragrance up. It's at Sephora all the time. If you haven't come across it or you just think that this is a maybe, possibly, I don't know, great interpretation, I totally agree. Warm and spicy, it boasts notes of pig pepper, rum, and tobacco. Yes, queen, yes. This shit is super fire, amazing fragrance. He will absolutely love this fragrance. It's definitely more fun than something like a Blue de Chanel, so I would personally go for this one over a Blue de Chanel EDT any day. Next one. Wow, Joe Malone Oud and Bergamon Cologne Intense. Gorgeous fragrance. I don't own it. I will get a bottle soon enough. It is an absolutely beautiful stellar fragrance and I haven't talked about it on this channel so that will be coming soon. So they have it listed as Juxtaposition. Who's that? Never done it. My wife doesn't let me. Is the name of the game with this cologne. Citrus notes of Amalfi lemon and orange. Rival woody notes of cedar and oud. It is a gorgeous fragrance. I've only smelled it twice but it definitely left an impression. I'm not familiar with it being honestly the, C the uh, intense version but maybe I should revisit it and see what kind of performance it has. I can't give my full blown opinion other than from what I remember, which is a good amount of beauty, brightness, and depth in the fragrance. Maybe we'll revisit it on this channel soon enough. Next one. Prada Luna Rosa Ocean Eau de Toilette. I've never smelled it. I can't give my true opinion on this fragrance. From what I know about the Prada Luna Rosa line, it is a solid line, but there's a few flankers on it that are just kind of hit or miss. This one, I don't know, so I will save judgment on it, obviously, since I haven't smelled it, but am I like jumping to wanna smell it because it's on this list? 
Not really. Next one. Damn, it seems that we're getting to fragrances that I haven't smelled. Gucci the Alchemist Garden, the last days of summer. Beautiful bottle. Definitely looks a little bit more femme, but that's just subjective. This is one work of art lacquered glass bottle, warm and cozy scents, cedar, cypress, and nutmeg, along with woody undertones, patchouli with vetiver swirling inside. Beautifully put. However, I can't comment on this particular fragrance or any of the ones on that line because I haven't smelled them at all. So, definitely got my curiosity on how good these joints are, but. We shall see you next one. Ah, now we cooking, baby. Yves Saint Laurent Y.O. de Parfum. Fantastic. Great fragrance. Definitely more mature as opposed to its counterparts. Super sexy, very fly. Dudes will absolutely love it. It's more of a clubby type wedding reception type vibe. And I think it's very, very dope. This fragrance makes its mark right from the start with a trio of fresh notes, bergamot, ginger, apple at its core. Juniper berry, geranium add freshness. Vanilla tonka bean gives it a hint of sweetness. And finally, sage and a big dose of amber. This is blended warm, woody feel. I feel my wood. Beautiful fragrance. I absolutely feel that. Dudes will rock this fragrance. This is definitely one of my more favorites in that flanker lineup. So yes. Great job, brides.com. Next one. I've been meaning to try this fragrance for a while. Burberry Hero. I don't know shit about it, honestly. Uh, I've walked by it so many times and never picked it up. I don't know why. In looking at the presentation right now, honestly, the bottle look just feels kind of boring. Maybe it just didn't catch my attention enough for me to want to jump into it and purchase this fragrance. So in this case, presentation is kind of key because there's nothing like captivated me to like, come smell me, put me on your nose, not like cocaine. Yeah, so I don't know anything about this fragrance. I can't give my opinion if they will or won't like it, but presentation wise alone, just seems a little boring. Come on, Burberry, put some fucking patches on it like a Dominican baby shower and all the dudes with the button ups. Let's go, next one. Golf clap like the movie Men at Work. Joe Malone Wood Sage and Sea Salt, AKA BMW Manhattan's waiting area fragrance. Although last time I went, it wasn't smelling like that, so I'm kind of disappointed. Maybe I blew up the spot and the secret's out. Great, beautiful, unique, aquatic, comforting. This is like mental therapy in spray form. Gorgeous fragrance. I love how this fragrance smells. This is a definitely chill, white t-shirt, cozy couch, cuddle type vibe fragrance with brightness, but this soft fabric softener, cuddly sensation about it that is stellar. They say this is just about as close as you can get to bottling actual ocean air with sea salt. I agree. Beautifully said. It's just that kind of sensation. If you're laying on the beach, the sand, and that wind is just kicking off the wave and hitting you in the face, it's beautiful. It's a stellar fragrance. It's not massively like clawing or mass appeal or anything along those space, but it's real sexy. It's got a fucking vibe. And it has this kind of neurological sensory shit that really triggers you to just be like, wow, hmm. I like how this vibes. It's not gonna offend me. My wife doesn't like fragrance too much. If I spray this, it's not gonna kill it. Like it really has that chill vibe. So yes, dudes, get this one. It's a good one. Next one. Calvin Klein Eternity for Men. I think they were tapping into a little bit of an older demographic. This is an oldie but goodie, but more of an oldie. Ah, uh, not something that I would personally rock right now. And I'm on the older side and this is still not that lit. I'm not 40 yet, but this is definitely like early young Cuba days. Still good, but nah, this is kind of dated. There's just so much other stuff in that price point that you can get that are really stellar. So Eternity for Men, it's just not one of them. Next one. Wow, I'm surprised that's on this list. This is a polarizing fragrance. Not many people rock with age 22. The ones who like it really rock with it and the ones who don't just can't stand it. I'm on the former. I like H24. I think it's a crazy, beautiful, bright fragrance that deviates from the original Turd Hermes kind of DNA and still adds that bright, sour, citric note that gives a lot of breath and life in the hot summer. I think it's super dope. Bright citrus, most often described more with feminine scents. Not necessarily. Hermes's first fragrance was designed with the contemporary man in mind. I could definitely see how the contemporary man would rock this fragrance. I think it's an absolutely beautiful fragrance. I say shop it in the secondary market, wait a little bit till the price point drops down, but it's a good fragrance for the summertime. It has versatility to be a signature scent, but it really leans with so much citruses towards the hot weather that I think going that route would be the best option. And you can spray your asshole with this and not feel musty at the end of the day. Next one. Hugo Boss Boss Bottled. Hmm. 
I can actually see this as being a bridal fragrance or like a fragrance for a wedding. This definitely has that sophisticated grow man sharpness and freshness with little gingery nuances that really give it that kind of, here comes the bride all dressed in white. Crisp and fresh at the top with green apple and bergamot musky scent is sophisticated yet suitable for everyday wear. It's an absolutely daily signature scent type wearing fragrance. Is it amazing? No. Is it bad? No. Is it very formal and casual, business casual kind of vibes? Absolutely. Is it something that he's gonna drop his panties on? They have it priced here at $91? No. Not worth that. Lot, lot less. Get it cheaper. Still nice, but shouldn't be on this list. Next one. Celine Black Tie. Don't know this fragrance. I have actually never heard of it. They kind of describe it as date night, nighttime wedding reception or honeymoon makes it interesting. They say it's musky, it's sweet with orris butter, cedar, tree moss, and vanilla. Listen, I don't know. It has me intrigued. I love the bottle presentation. Maybe I'll get my hands on it next one. Mojave Ghost. I haven't smelled Mojave Ghost in so long. Escape the city life and be transported to the Mojave Desert with this evocative, is that what it says? I don't know what that is. Scent. At first, it gives, you, it gives off notes of amber, violet, and magnolia. And as it blends, it's worn throughout the day. Heady notes of musk and amber emerge. Okay. Yes, it's a very, very nice fragrance. Super vibey. But... Do I love it? At times. I have my emotional moments with Mojave Ghost when I did have a small bottle of it. I no longer do. Maybe I need to revisit it because it's definitely been well over two years and maybe something I need to retap in now that my nose has smelled hundreds of other fragrances. Maybe it's something that uh, I feel like I'm missing. So should it be on this list? I don't know. Next one. Oh, and that's actually the last fragrance on this list. Wow, that was 17 fragrances already. That's pretty remarkable. We went to them quite quickly. So what do you what do you think about this list? Do you agree with these being the 17 best colognes that men will love? I think it being the best cologne option, hmm, I think there could have been better options for that 17 best cologne list. Maybe I'll comprise my own best cologne list. That'll, that'll be my interpretation and my taste. But if this is coming from brides, you know, and the ladies run it, Maybe they are right. Shout out to brides.com and this article. Very cool for our fragheads. Let me know what you guys think of the article. If you looked at it and what your thoughts are. I'll see y'all bitches next time. You know what is biggest in the game. Smooches. Fly gun holder, money folder, molar roller, star tag. When it's time to call back, for the rough, rugged, and raw way, this nigga Jay, it's a game, but he don't play. Hey, for all the chicks that got dead in the penthouse suite on top of my mom's crib, it's long since you never get in. It's long since that you would think that you would.